Good evening to you cigar lovers out there. Um, the gents at cigarsindia.in, India's online premier and trusted retailers of cigars, have uh, again kindly asked me to review these babies. The uh, Arturo Fuente Hemingway series. Let's open the box constructions. This box is just remarkable, which is a good indication of the uh, cigars uh, themselves. So it comes in this really beautifully uh, presented uh, presentation box with, uh, with a nice rubric on there and uh, wrapped cigars. So just focus on the box yeah, and the label of the box just beautifully constructed so you're going to be getting something quite uh, premium here this as I said is the Arturo Fuente Hemingway series and it's part of their Grand Reserva range it's uh, the shape is what's known as a perfecto or Generally, they're known as cigados, which is oddly shaped cigars, or not the areos you typically expect. And this is an example of a perfecto in terms of size and shape. So it's uh, sealed, uh, well, not sealed, but closed at the bottom. The head is uh, sealed and it's got a bulge towards the middle. This is actually made in the Dominican Republic. The length is about uh, 6 inches and it's a 47 ring gauge. Strength has been described as medium and the wrapper is a Cameroon wrapper. It's non-flavoured and it's purely using long filler. Now the reason for the shape is uh, it, it's got an interesting story to it which Besides going on to the history of Arturo Fuente, I'll just say that historically the cigar shape used to be like this, figados or perfecto in this particular example. Only from the 1900s onwards was the cigar shape changed so that you have a flat bottom and sealed at the top and your typical cylinder kind of shape. These were very much harder to make and required a lot of skill which is why I guess for increasing the production these were kind of put to one side and the more standardized version you could say was implemented simply to meet the demand. The reason why these cigars are interesting is because if you actually look at the shape of it what you're actually smoking at this part here is pretty much a binder and wrapper leaf and only when, once you reach to this point here and towards the end you actually get the filler uh, uh, tobacco actually coming in as well and adding some complexity. So you get several different tastes coming into this and this is a nice experience if you just pretty much use the Prejeo uh, shape which is, you can say, can be uniform from the start to the finish in terms of general flavour and complexity. Here you get some subtle variety. So nice interesting shape. It requires a, a skillful roller to make something like this because this is not run of the mill. So now uh, just I'll light it up, or cut it, light it up and uh, give you an idea of what it's about. So I've just uh, cut the cigar. What kind of pre-lighting uh, taste do I get of this? I get something that's fairly aged. I've also get, I'm also getting something which is kind of leathery, something that's been seasoned for some time. The tobacco would have been uh, well well matured and well kept um, for some period of time. I'm not getting any other kind of earthy quality or certainly peppery quality to it. Just something that's seasoned and leathery and something that's been well looked after, I think. Let me light it. This is always going to be... 
going to be the interesting part because it's such a small area. <laughs> Not to over burn or over torch the uh, torch. <laughs> so what I'm getting at the moment is the is the wrapper leaf and the binder leaf in predominance. There's very little uh, filler leaf there at the moment. And that affects the, the complexity and the balance of the cigar as well. So the Arturo Fuente range, it was actually set up by a Cuban emigre, uh, I think uh, about 1912, by the name Arturo Fuente. Eventually, the ownership was passed on to his son, Carlos Fuente Sr., because there is another Carlos Fuente, and he's Carlos Fuente Jr., who's a grandson. And uh, both great-grandson and uh, grandson actually uh, run the company, uh, I think, uh, up to the present day. What I'm getting is a toasted bean, toasted nuts. Picking up a bit now. And toasted tobacco. So toasted tobacco and cocoa. Some there's a there's a hint of sweetness, but not much. I smoked uh, some of the various Arturo Fuente cigars a very long time ago, about 10, 10, 12 years ago. So. My memory is uh, just coming back to me about what I sampled then and what I'm sampling now. And I remember it always being quite potent, especially the Opus X range. But this is certainly not that. This is very well balanced, actually. Interesting. Now, going back to the history of the cigar, this was, uh, as I said, it's run now by uh, the, the grandson and the great-grandson, uh, the Carlos's junior and senior. And they originally set up in uh, Florida, Tampa Bay, but for various reasons and various misfortunes, they've had to move around uh, various countries, in fact. Uh, started off in Cuba, settled in uh, Florida, but due to costs and expenses, they had to move out. They moved to the, uh, I think in the 70s, they moved to the Esteli region in Nicaragua, but there were, again, uh, problems with uh, the, the, the factory actually burning down. So now they're pretty much based in the Dominican Republic, and this uh, belief and uh, everything about it uh, is, uh, the construction is made in the Dominican From that time when they started to now, they've just taken the adversity in their stride and they've built up a formidable reputation for uh, quality and uh, con quality of construction, quality of the tobacco, and they've got a recognizably well founded uh, brand name throughout the, throughout the world, especially in the United States. This is uh, more so because of the embargo uh, after the, uh, Fidel Castro came into power in the 1960s. So prior to the revolution, a lot of the uh, tobacco leaf was actually sourced from Cuba, but post the revolution, the uh, tobacco leaf had to be sourced from elsewhere because they just couldn't get hold of that. So the difficulty then is to find a leaf which would offer as much of uh, approximate taste profile to Cuban leaf and I think that was a skill and uh, difficulty that they faced and uh, the skill that they actually managed to use to actually overcome that problem of finding something that tastes so close to a Cuban cigar. If you actually look at the smoke as well, plumes of white smoke. And 
the ash is actually quite light as well, which makes me wonder what the soil composition of um, the plantation is. Uh, maybe the ratio of magnesium to potash is, uh, is uh, slightly different to other varieties, certainly for the human varieties. Okay, this is an interesting smoke because uh, from what I remember it's actually proved to be quite different. Either my, probably my taste buds and uh, things have changed over time. But uh, it's very well, uh, very well balanced cigar. I'm actually getting a kind of charred earth, uh, very earthy kind of quality to it. There's no pepperiness, no spiciness, nothing like that. And that was perhaps a prejudgment I had before I even lit the cigar. And I thought, okay, it's going to be peppery because it's uh, that kind of uh, from the Dominican Republic. But I think refining that uh, point now, I'd have to say that if from the Dominican Republic is actually producing something which is quite delicate and very well balanced. The draw is very good uh, and it's very surprisingly smooth. Yes, and it's, it, it is a very earthy kind of earthy kind of uh, uh, charred earth. Picking up a bit now, I'm just getting a hint of that peppery quality coming through. And there's just a very slight hint of uh, green, greenness, vegetal uh, taste coming through, grassy green, but minute. Compared to a number of other cigars, that's minute, just a slight hint. So for various reasons, the company moved from uh, Nicaragua, ended up in the Dominican Republic, and uh, during that process, they, uh, late 90s, 2000, they produced uh, the Opus X range, which was uh, for, I think, more for the American market than anything else, simply because they couldn't get their hands on good Cuban cigars because of the embargo. That was considered and rated as a premium smoke, uh, the Opus X range and had very high, regard, uh, high reviews in Cigar Aficionado as well. This used to be in my, this used to be in my top three non-Cuban smokes. Of course that's changed now, but say about two, three years ago, this used to be in the top three. I'd go with an Otter of Fuente, Paul Arañaga, and uh, Dunhill uh, signature range, signature range, and they were my top three, and especially the Arturo Fuente, simply because their 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 eye to detail and their insistence on quality at all costs um, made it uh, understandably a premium brand, especially for the uh, countries which couldn't import uh, Cuban cigars. picked up a lot, it's becoming more peppery, but I'm still getting that uh, charred soil, heavy earth coming through with the smoke. There's just a bit of grass coming through now as well. Just just a bit more than before. But it was like it was meant to be in the cigar. This is probably the filler leaf coming in the Ligero, which is giving that backbone and uh, the strength to the cigar. I'll have a few more puffs on this and get back to you with uh, changes. The aroma on the uh, smoke is really nice. It's uh, very rich and this is a very I, I suppose for me why I liked it at the start was it was a, one of the closest approximations to a, to a Cuban cigar uh, bearing in mind that the leaf now doesn't come from Cuba at all so the, the choice of blends that they actually use um, is it's just really good I'm not sure I, I can probably do some research and uh, 
find out perhaps on another review the uh, typical uh, or the choice of leaves on these cigars. But uh, it, it, it is uh, quite remarkable. It's a very refined smoke. It's um, certainly been aged for some time. And from the time you get it from the box, if you want to smoke it then and there, you won't be disappointed. You will enjoy that then, but if you want to keep it for some more time, a few years, I could only imagine that the flavors would be more delicate and more refined and uh, certainly more well-balanced. It's already well-balanced now and smooth. The draw on this is remarkable. I've just passed it to some of our friends on this tasting as well and uh, they found it a very remarkable, well-balanced and refined cigar. I think in a word you could say it's a very refined cigar. Um, they found it didn't really need aging as well. Um, it would just get better with uh, being kept in the humidor and left for several years. Um, some of the more prominent flavours I think would tone down and mellow out and you'd get some of the other subtle flavours coming through. As I said, at the moment I'm just getting rich, uh, rich earthy kind of burnt earth kind of uh, character to this. There's a hint of sweetness as well, <coughs> but very uh, toned down. In, in, on the whole, I'd say this is a very toned down cigar, and certainly not what I was expecting, or as I remembered some of the other Bitolos from the uh, Arturo Fuente range. In terms of when I would smoke this, it's a good daytime smoke, good for a beginner, also an intermediate smoker if they want to get into the non-Cuban range of cigars. The only thing I would suggest, and this one is certainly well kept, I mean, the, it's moist and it's uh, been well looked after, is a good indication. I think if it was left out to dry for a bit, it may be a bit more acrid, um, and some of the harsher characters may come out of it, but that I haven't experienced in this. I, I'm just guessing if it was left out, badly looked after, badly maintained, it would be a bit harsher, but then you tend to find that with most cigars, whether they're Cuban or not. I just feel that this one will be more susceptible to that. So if you're going to smoke this, and you can certainly smoke this within an hour or so, and enjoy that experience, do so within that time. Don't leave it, cut it, and leave it for a, for a day or so. Uh, it, will it will only make the experience uh, not as good as it is now. There's a bit of greenness coming through the, sm uh, through the cigar now. So that earthy quality has been dropped, it's toned down a bit. The pepperiness, it's it, not that it had very much peppery, peppery quality to begin with, it's not there. It certainly is a lot greener. I think it's a characteristic of the cigar not due to aging or a requirement for aging. I'll have a few more puffs and get back to you. I'm not sure why. It's been pretty much delivering the same thing from the last time uh, I gave a description on the aroma and the taste. The price point for the cigar is about uh, 990 rupees. Uh, again, a very reasonable price for what many consider uh, from a cigar maker, Arturo Fuente, uh, as a premier, premier cigar maker. So well worth the experimentation if you're, if you're a seasoned uh, Cuban cigar smoker, you want to try something non-Cuban. This is something you want to go for. This can be aged for, for a good few years, I'd say, about another three to five years. Keep it in your humidor, look after it, and you won't be disappointed when you come to actually smoke it. The flavours will become, I'm sure, more delicate and more refined, but it's starting from a high point anyway.
they made the cigars nicely and you couldn't really ask for anything more. Um, I think in terms of uh, accompaniment to the cigar, food would have to be not, it would have to be mild, nothing too pungent. Uh, again, same thing with uh, spirits or beverages. Uh, this would go nicely, I think. This is something like a cappuccino or a latte. Certainly not a, an espresso. Uh, in terms of whiskies, uh, I'd say lowland whiskies, which are more delicate and floral, because uh, this, do, this is a very refined smoke. So if you had something like an Isla or something spe from Speyside, which was overly sweet, uh, it would tend to overpower that. Having said that, I'm actually drinking um, a fairly sweet whiskey at the moment, and it seems to be doing well. go nicely with the white wine as well. It's picked up in strength with the residual oils and the carbonized uh, particulates of, of uh, tobacco, but nothing pungent, still no peppery quality, none of them other unpleasant tastes. Good daytime smoke. So I'd leave it at that. If you like this review, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe. If you have any comments, please do get in contact with the guys at cigarsindia.in. They're really helpful, very knowledgeable, and they'd be able to give you good advice on the range of Arturo Fuente cigars, the Hemingway cigar, and also other cigars which they do stock. You can also check them out on Twitter and uh, like them on Facebook. So hopefully we'll see you again and I've been reliably informed one of my other reviews will be a pipe. Yes, a pipe. So hopefully see you guys soon.